Good morning, boys and girls. This is Dr. Manarsik again, and today we will be dealing with Chapter 3 of Pathology called Regeneration and Healing. If you remember, in Chapters 1 and 2, we talked about a lot of nasty things that could happen to cells and tissues, like necrosis, apoptosis, and various types of inflammation. Now, we're going to talk about how that tissue gets back to normal again. It's a process called healing something that doesn't really have to be defined because healing is why we're in medical school. Uh, regeneration uh, technically is something a little bit different. It's basically just a replacement of tissues, but we'll get into that. I have Dr. Zaiden here with me, world famous, and I'm so glad he is uh, here to help me uh, be honest and not go over time. The purpose of our uh, chapter our learning objectives is just in one page. We're going to review the normal physiology and concept of cell proliferation. We're going to talk about the basic uh, factors of tissue uh, regeneration. We're going to understand the relationships between cells and the ECM or extracellular matrix. We're talking about the roles of major players of healings, growth factors, uh, angiogenesis, uh, fibrosis, how this all fits into the big continuing saga that we talked about with uh, acute inflammation. Last but not least, there's always some little uh, important uh, question on some test where you have to differentiate between primary or first and second intention healing. We're going to show you that as well. Let's define things. Regeneration is growth of cells to replace lost tissues. Healing is the undoing of all of those processes that we talked about in the previous two chapters, like necrosis, like inflammation. We told you that one of the three possible outcomes of inflammation is to become normal again. Uh, well, that's called healing. The other two things, if you remember, were chronic inflammation and fibrosis. Uh, somewhere in between, there's going to be uh, an ingrowth of blood vessels. Some people call this granulation tissue in terms of a histologic uh, image. Some people call it organizing inflammation. But let me tell you something. They're exactly the same concept. And what it refers to is the fact that you're going to see a lot of ingrowth of new blood vessels after an inflammatory or a uh, healing process. And those are the two names it goes under. What is regeneration? Regeneration is replacement of lost structures. It is totally dependent on the type of normal turnover the original tissue has. So for example, if uh, a white cell normally has a turnover of a couple days, that's going to be fast regeneration. If cells like striated muscle or brain don't normally uh, undergo mitosis, that's going to be a really, really long one. In fact, it probably will never really fully happen. But we should understand that there's a difference between regeneration of tissues to replace lost structures and compensatory growth. An example of compensatory growth would be as if you uh, had one kidney removed to donate to your uh, sister who needs a uh, transplant. The other kidney in your body will become big. So they're related, but uh, I still wanted to make that differentiation. What is healing? Well, healing cannot occur unless there's been something abnormal beforehand, like an inflammatory process or necrosis. Um, sometimes it ends with a scar, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes there's a lot of fibrosis or scarring, which is the same term, or sometimes there's a little. And that depends on a lot of factors, but the key player in the healing process is the extracellular matrix. So if there's been a lot of damage to your extracellular matrix, chances are there's going to be a lot of fibrosis or a lot of scarring. If there has been very little damage, there'll be little. And we're going to see this when we talk about uh, second and first uh, intention healing. Um, let's look at the only three things cells can do. Well, if these are cells here in the middle, and we know they eventually came from stem cells, there's only three things they could do. Well, they could divide, just to be have become perfect identically with the same cell that they came from. Or they could undergo a very, very mysterious transition, which we call differentiation. And differentiation is something I have been thinking about every single day of my life. 
and I could probably spend about six months talking about it, but I want to tell you it in about 30 seconds. When a cell differentiates, it divides and it loses some of its potential uh, nucleic acid expression in the process of doing it. But what it then does is accentuate other expressions of that DNA to specialize. So cells that differentiate from baseline populations into more differentiated cells specialize. And as you might guess, there's a whole bunch of compounds that uh, enable this. The third thing a cell could do is die. We already know that from apoptosis. So what are the three things uh, cells can do? They could proliferate, they could differentiate, or they could die normally by a process called apoptosis. Proliferation of cells is under a lot of control of uh, growth factors and hormones, uh, especially the steroid hormones, of course, the ones that go directly to the nucleus rather than fool around on the membrane doing all the second messenger stuff. Uh, for example, EPO, erythropoietin, is the main uh, hormone cell substance uh, chemical that enables proliferation and some differentiation in the uh, normoblast or red cell series with uh, white cells or granulocytes CSF or colony stimulating factor is the big one. Uh, once again differentiation is a unidirectional process in which a cell gains the ability to become more specialized either in appearance or more likely in function, but then it loses some of its ability to express some of its uh, uh, nucleic acid roots as well. And we all know what apoptosis is because we spent a whole bunch of time on it, but ladies and gentlemen, these are the only three things cells can do. Let's talk about the cell cycle. As you know, there's only two phases. There's interphase and non-interphase. And non-interphase is generally called mitosis. There's a G1 growth phase before the S DNA synthesis phase. And then there's another G phase afterwards. So this is called presynthetic. G1 is presynthetic to DNA synthesis. And then G2 is pre-mitotic to mitoses. And technically, uh, mitosis does not include cytokinesis uh, in which you actually have the uh, separation of the two cells. Mitosis is classically PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Prophase you see in the chromosome appear. Metaphase they're lining up at the equator. Anaphase they're getting pulled apart. And telophase is the uh, prelude to cytokinesis in which you have the actual separation of these uh, bags of uh, string into two separate cells. So in the uh, cell cycle, sometimes people talk about a G0 phase right after cell division, which doesn't last very long. But uh, the presynthetic phase is G1. This is the main phase in which cell growth takes place. We then have the S phase in which the cells are uh, constantly turning over uh, by virtue of making a DNA synthesis. And then we have the G2 phase preparing it for mitosis. And you know what happens in mitosis. But rather than give you a totally non-clinical description of something you've probably heard of, we can apply the S phase to uh, pathology because tumors, which are nasty, have greater turnover, have a longer S phase. So if you uh, order a, uh, some kind of molecular study on one of your patients in which you see that the tumor has a high S phase, you know that that's a bad prognostic sign. Let's go back down to basic uh, uh, concepts again. We talked about certain cells uh, regenerating faster than others. Well, as you know, uh, cells such as uh, bone marrow cells, specifically uh, the granulocyte precursors, those have a turnover of just a couple days, so they're very labile. The uh, GI mucosal cells are also very uh, labile. Uh, they turn over quickly. Cells such as liver and kidney turn over, but not very much, 
and the neurons in the serrated muscle don't turn over. Why? Because they don't, uh, are not capable of mitosis. Uh, we'll continue in the next slide because Dr. Zayden tapped me on the shoulder 30 seconds later than he was supposed to. I'm going to fire him. He won't be here in the next movie. Bye. <laughs>